my talk uh, about uh, targeted therapy in lung cancer. Over the last uh, few years, we realized that not all lung cancers are the same. Uh, in the past, we treated all non-small cell lung cancer in a similar fashion. Uh, and then we evolved to differentiate based on the histology. Uh, right now, we've evolved in a completely uh, new grounds where we differentiate the treatment of lung cancer based on oncological markers. And the most famous of these oncological markers is EGFR mutation and the ALK translocation, uh, where targeted therapy to this particular uh, molecular uh, aberrances has significant impact on the outcome of lung cancer. Uh, that's not actually my talk today. That's the talk prior to my talk. My talk was the other newer oncogenic targets that has been discovered in lung cancer since then. So I'm going to cover uh, three or four of these new oncogenic targets, the BRAF, which is a well-known uh, mutation that happened uh, in melanoma and lung cancer, perhaps and some other rare malignancies like thyroid cancer. And it turns out that uh, targeting this uh, oncogenic driver uh, in melanoma is, is very uh, uh, useful for the melanoma patient. We have data now in lung cancer uh, that it's also useful in lung cancer. I'm going to also cover uh, the HER2 amplification, which is very famous in breast cancer and very unfamous uh, in lung cancer. But it turns out that in lung cancer, there is utility for targeting that gene as well. We'll cover two other areas, which is MET, uh, exon 14 um, skipping, as well as the red oncogene. Uh, and just uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it highlights the, uh, the significant change in our mindset on how to treat lung cancer. Instead of treating all lung cancer patients the same, we are identifying small subsets of people. So instead of saying all lung cancers or adenocarcinoma, which is 100,000 patients a year for perhaps uh, in the United States for adenocarcinoma or 120, perhaps uh, another 60,000 or 80,000 for squamous cell carcinoma. We used to treat this 120,000 or 130,000 in a very similar fashion. Now we're identifying subsets of patients. This couple of thousands of patients have that oncogenic driver, and there is a new drug for this. So all these the, the new drugs are targeted drugs in general that, that benefits a subset of patients. And that is the era of personalized medicine. There is also a new class of drugs that might not be as specific as this targeted therapy, which is immune therapy. When we talk about immune therapy, we are really uh, targeting the immune system of the body, awakening the immune system to the presence of the cancer. Cancer exists in our body because the body is not fighting it. And the reason it's not fighting it is cancer evades the immune system. We have understand mechanisms by which cancer evades the immune system. It could be by secretion of an enzyme, and there is an abbrevi abbreviation for that enzyme is IDO, without going into the full name, the by expression of a factor like a PDL1 on the surface of the cancer cells. And this interacts with the immune system of the body and basically put the immune system to sleep. New class of drugs that awakens the immune system by making the immune system see the cancer as a foe and starting to attack. These treatments are not necessarily as specific as targeted therapy, but that's a good thing as well because it might benefit a larger proportion of patients. It's a new spectrum of side effects. I, I must, however, say that it's a completely different uh, uh, bar that we've, we've, we've now, we've raised the bar. If I present the patient, the, the types of drugs we used to treat cancer with 20 years ago and present it to ourselves or our patients now, we would be laughing at our, ourselves. We treated uh, cancer in the past with drugs that can cause significant nausea, can cause significant, significant peripheral neuropathy in large proportion of patients. Now we're, we're dealing with drugs that still have side effects, but the side effects, maybe it's new types of side effects, but affect a handful of the patients. And I'm, by no means I want to uh, uh, underestimate the importance of a 5% incidence of a side effect, uh, but it is not 20% or th not 30%. But we need to educate ourselves how to avoid these particular side effects. We need to be aware that they can happen and can be life-threatening. But the idea of treating cancer patients now is not to have the patient have the stigma of a cancer patient getting treatment with the, with the, with the uh, you would be able to identify cancer patients from a distance. This is a cancer patient getting treatment. With the treatment nowadays we are giving, uh, patients are living near normal life, or I can say that many of my patients are uh, having completely normal life with very manageable, uh, very little side effects. 
effects and uh, live completely normal uh, activity, uh, perhaps go back to work. That's the idea of making cancer a chronic disease in which patients can tolerate that cancer as well as be functional and enjoy quality of life.